sit in next to you this week. <laughs> he's not, but why, why choose Barry as captain? You seem to be having a bit of a match between him and Jack. Is that no, no, not at all. It's just... Uh, uh, yeah, both boys have done the been captain under the 20s. Uh, they're highly respected, uh, not just by us, but by the regions as well and stuff. And you know, potentially future captains of Wales, not just in the short term, but you know, the long term. So it's not about. It's kind of thinking about you know, putting things together, obviously for the World Cup, but starting to a little bit of the process about the next cycle and getting on that next cycle with uh, with a group of players is probably. Um, we know there's a number of players who won't be available for us for the Six Nations, whether they make the World Cup squad or not. So there will be, you know, there will be changes going forward too. Is it an indication that we can expect a new generation of captain for the World Cup then? Probably. In terms of the team, there's obviously an awful lot of changes. What are you expecting from from this side against England? Uh, what am I expecting? Um, a group of players who are desperate to perform. Um, so it's a good, good situation to be in. You know, England have picked their squad, so um, they'll want to go out there and, and perform. But you know, sometimes it's almost the relief of being selected in a squad and understand that um, you know they might be happy I'm on the plane and and there um, and whether you're quite there emotionally, it's kind of a little bit. You know, that's a challenge for them to get up. Uh, I know we've got a group of players that are in the right headspace because um, that team went out last week and yeah we weren't perfect but I thought they showed some great signs of what we're looking for as a group and you know, particularly the second half and I thought um, we saw a group of players playing for each other. Um, so it's an, for me personally it's a, it's a good position to be in knowing there's a team going out on Saturday against England who uh, want to perform but know they have to perform as well. Lots of interesting competition with Joe Roberts in the centre. It's obviously a new cap. What, what makes you start him? Joe? Yeah. Um, I've been impressed with him for a while um, in terms of his footwork and carrying and stuff. You know, he's got, you know, he's, he's, he's big through the thighs. He's got a big ass as well. So <laughs> um, that's always a, a positive for a midfielder. Um, he's left footed. And we haven't got any other left footers as well. So it gives us a little bit of a point of difference in terms of. Um, your kicking strategy and your exit plays and how you might want to manipulate teams. So, um, so I'm interested to see how he how he goes there. Look, he's had a bit of a knee. He hasn't taken a full part in trainings and stuff, but he's back fit now. And um, so interested to see how he goes. You know, with Nick, we, t we spoke about Kieran uh, potentially, but it would have been a pretty young midfield combination. So Nick brings a little bit of experience, and and hopefully Kieran gets a, a good run there in the second half. In terms of the injuries, there's three players who have been through the full summer and not featured yet. Are they OK for the World Cup? What's the, who the, 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 which well, three? Uh, Johnny Williams, Talupe Palatam and Alex Chappell. Uh, Talupe won't uh, play, be available next week. He, he, took a foot, uh, he trained pretty well today. He's not feeling anything in his calf and that, so we're pretty confident that he's available for selection. Um, I think Johnny's got, you know, potentially uh, was fit for next week. And who's the other one? Uh, Alex Chappell. Alex Cuthbert uh, should be fit uh, for selection next week. Uh, Gareth Hanscom's not fit for the selection. Gareth Hanscom. Yeah. So not fit for next week. Right? Who's that? Gareth Hanscom no. not fit for next week. No. Does that rule him out of the World Cup? No. Still? No, he doesn't. So, so he's, he he took a bit of a knock on his um, thumb in, in um, Turkey, so it's just precautionary at this stage. So he should be he should be right after that. The likes of Plumtree in the back row coming in, and Lydia to still get in. A a big chance. What are you expecting in the back row? You've been, you know, mixing and matching a bit. Um, yeah, just looking at um, you know different combinations. Uh, we, we know that we've got some real competition at seven, so there's a chance for, for Tommy and then with Tane on the bench, uh, Tane Basham on the bench, and then Tane Tane Plumtree is um, you know was an option. We thought uh, Aaron Wainwright, Aaron Wainwright was really good last week and. Um, if uh, Tulupe, you know, doesn't pull through for whatever reason or breaks down in the next few weeks, then we've got some, you know, a couple of players that have we've had a look at, at the in the back row and and uh, so with uh, Dan coming in at six, uh, we've, we've moved um, Chris to have a look at him in the, in the second row. We we're pleased with our our um, second rows last week, um, so there's a chance for um, you know Adam Beard and, and Reece Davis to make an impression. I thought Ben Carter was good when he came off the bench and. 
and we'll see if uh, you know Chris is an option for us either as a second row or, or that sort of um, hybrid sort of back row second row cover. What are your expectations at Twickenham? Is it about learning more about your squad selection, or is it about winning the game? For them or us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, um, we just want to go out and give a good performance. That's uh, yeah, we, you know we didn't talk about winning last week. We, just, we talked about performance and. If I go back to 2019, um, and I know the mindset that they would be in. You know, we lost the first game up there in a pretty close game. We came down and the game at home here was about winning and um, and you know, digging deep and, and, and just getting that W on the board. So, we, you know, we haven't, like I said, we haven't spoken about winning. We've just spoken about the processes and then guys working hard for each other and playing hard for each other. And, and our whole mindset is it's become a really tough team to beat. And if we become a tough team to beat and players are doing those things, the basis, the fundamentals, working hard for each other, then uh, the result takes care of itself, as we saw last week. And we saw a team of guys who are working really hard and playing for each other. And so that's, that's definitely the same mindset this week. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot at stake. There's, there's, and, and players are well aware of that. We're not, we're not highlighting that, not trying to put extra pressure on them, just go out there and perform. They're, they're well aware of... Um, the situation, and so as a result, we, you know we've mixed the team teams up, um, and we're still not, you know, very uncertain, you know, particularly, you know, who's going to be maybe the what the combination is going to be, whether the, who's going to be the second or the third player in that position, or who's going to be what's a combination of a midfield and the makeup of a back three. So, um, you know, it's definitely opportunities for players to go out there and perform, put their hands up. Warren, is there recognition that this is almost a bigger challenge than last week? The way at Twickenham, some of us have won three times since 1990. It's a more experienced senior squad. So if the debut round played well, came through the game, it would almost count for more? Do you think it's a more experienced senior squad? Well, it's experienced back in there with Farah back in, Billy Cole back in. Yeah, I thought, they had a, I thought they were pretty experienced last week. You know, I thought they had put out a, a, a reasonable team. Um, yeah, there's some, you know, probably more, you know, a few more Lions players come into the squad and stuff, and that. Uh, yeah, I mean, the focus is is on us. Um, you know, we tr we tried to change a few things and turn to the way we did things last week with our kicking strategy. Um, you know, looking at their stuff that they've posted online. They've talked about them wanting to win the kicking battle and about how kicking, kicking creates space, um, how we probably dominated that area last week. Um, so we, we expect them to kick a heck of a lot more than they did last week. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Is midfield one of your biggest headaches? Yep. On the one hand, not really had, a, I guess, a settled combination for the last few years. On the other, we've got some young, exciting players coming through. Do you know how many centres you want to take, or is it probably it four? Four centres. So you've said you went 19 forwards, 14 backs. Probably, you, yeah. Do you know the makeup of those backs at the minute, or is there no. an element of space on performance? Don't know the makeup. Okay. Um, you've mentioned so injury-wise that everyone's still in contention. I think you will have used 46 and 48 post this weekend. So all the players who haven't played are still there. Yeah, but it's, it's going to be tougher for them, isn't it? You know, if you haven't if you haven't trained a lot and you haven't played, uh, you may get an opportunity next week, and you probably got to have a, a pretty special game to, and and some of those players might get that chance next week. Um, we'll see how Saturday goes, and look at the makeup of the squad, and then look up, look at a couple of positions where we're not quite sure of, and so there may be you know a double up from players from the first game, um, just to to finalise what. We think, um, like I said, in, in positions where there's one or two players, which, which is a toss-up, um, yeah, we'll, we'll make that call. So, like, we're happy with the depth that we're creating uh, for now and, and for going forward. Um, but you know, we're very much hoping to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. And there's always a challenge for players who have had injuries and haven't taken a full part. And, uh, and the training stuff, you know, particularly for younger players, 
um, you know, if you've been around for a while and experience, you, 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 you can tend to carry players and you know, England are doing that a little bit with some of the experienced players that, that haven't played a lot um, and we'll look at that as well with the makeup of the squad. And just finally, if you're thinking of taking four centres, does that mean more than likely four back three players? Probably. <laughs> Alex? Hi, Warren. Um, do you think that's a, in your warm-up game, that there's actually a little bit of pressure on England to, to win this weekend, given the strength of the team? No. Okay. And I read your column on Marcus Smith's interest. What have you made of the approach that England are taking and maybe their struggles in the last yeah, World Cup cycle since yeah. reaching the final? Oh, look, I just think he's an incredibly talented player. I just uh, I like him as a person. I like him as a rugby player. Uh, there were certain aspects of his game last week where he would have been a little bit disappointed with, but there was a couple of times on attack where he was very close to, to, to making line breaks and causing us some real problems as well. So, um, yeah, and, they, and they're going through a, a period where they're deciding which way they're going to go in terms of they've got a, they've got a blueprint where they want to play, he, he, whether he fits... Uh, totally into that blueprint. I was just making comparisons with, you know, if he was Welsh, he'd be, he would have been in the team a few years ago with us because, you know, we are limited with our, our playing depth and we don't have the luxuries that, that England have in that. Um, and I think he's the sort of player for the future. There's been so much negativity around rugby the last couple of years uh, and we need to create, we need to be positive about the game and how do we create superstars in the game where kids want to look up to people and wear their jersey and, and um, you know, play in the backyard and call themselves Marcus Smith. And I think, you know, potentially he's, he can be that um, that superstar, you know, like him to be playing for us, but, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that's the way I feel about him. And have you stopped yourself in these last couple of weeks and think that, you know, maybe you could have been in the other camp if things had worked out? <laughs> uh, not really. I'm happy that I'm here. Just, just lastly for me, obviously, Australia, you know, one of your main core rivals have named their squad and they've got the chance to see what you made of it. And Eddie James has comments that, you know, he's confident they're going to win the World Cup. Yeah, um, he's pretty confident he's going to beat South Africa and New Zealand as well. So, um, yeah, I thought the interesting thing with, I haven't had a really good look at the squad, obviously, with Hooper being out. Um, Carter Gordon sort of looking like he's only in sort of main 10 there. So, um, I think Skelton as captain, I thought was. It's a little bit of a, a surprise as well. Um, yeah, so he's he seems comfortable when throwing a few curveballs in there, and um, you know he's spoken really positively about what the cable were doing. I, you know, Eddie Eddie talked about smash and grab and doing that in the um, with the the championship and the and the bled as low as well. So um, yeah, maybe maybe part two of that might might work, but part part one hasn't sort of come off. So. Um, look, they're going to be. They've got some some talented players, and um, you know we'll, we'll we'll start thinking about them as we get closer towards that. You know we've probably got these next couple of games. Name the squad, and then our focus will be you know totally on on that first up game, which is pretty important. Okay, we'll do one follow up. Um, Warren, in terms of Carter's sake, have you told the players that if they get a worldly performance? Is it, is it driven that hard, or is there still the potential that someone might be brilliant and they were opportunity and be unfortunate enough not to be selected come the final squad? I haven't, no, I haven't said that. Um, but I think with this group, if someone was brilliant on the weekend, it would be pretty hard to leave anyone out that was brilliant. So um, I said there's a lot of competition within the squad. Um, uh, you know, I thought Jack Morgan's performance last week was pretty brilliant. So he's, he's probably got a good chance of making it. Okay, well, thank you very much, everyone. We'll leave it there with Warren.